Welcome back my soon-to-be motor vehicle operating friends from part one of this countdown where we cover the 20th through the 11th trending harder DMV questions. That's right, we're breaking down the permit test questions that students are struggling with more this past year than ever before. If you like up-to-date test questions, explanations with graphics, and the occasional dorky driving school pun, then you've come to the right place. So strap on your virtual seatbelts because this test prep ride is about to get a little rough and bumpy as we tackle the top 10 questions that learners are increasingly struggling with. Ready, set, let's go. Trending harder question number 10. If you are a minor and your cell phone rings while you're driving, you should A, answer it if you have a hands-free device, B, answer it if the call is from your parents, or C, let the call go to voicemail. The correct answer is C, let the call go to voicemail. If you are a minor, that is, you are younger than 18, it is against the law to answer your cell phone while driving, even if it is hands-free. And yes, adults can use a hands-free cell phone to answer a call while driving, but minors cannot. And if your cell phone rings, you have to let the call go to voicemail. When it is safe and legal, you can drive to the side of the road and park to use your phone. Unfortunately, many more students these days are answering the very dangerous and very wrong answer, A, answer it if, it's a, if you have a hands-free device. Uh, not only is this illegal for minors, but it's also dangerous because minors are statistically the most collision-prone drivers on the road, which makes sense because they are truly driving rookies, still learning how to become seasoned, defensive drivers. But don't worry, you'll get there once you get a few thousand miles under your belt. Until then, my young driving friends, please, for me, for your loved ones and other innocent drivers on the road, please, 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 did I say please? <laughs> leave the cell phones alone while you drive. The only time, and I mean the only time, a minor can use their phone while driving is to make a call for emergency assistance, like calling 911. Outside of that, no phones while driving, period. From the bottom of my driving instructor heart, I thank you. Next question, number nine. Safely backing your vehicle includes all of the following, except A, looking over your right shoulder as you back up, B, checking behind your vehicle before you get in, or C, tapping your horn before you back up. Correct answer is C, tapping your horn before you back up. This question can cause students trouble because they often miss the keyword except in the question. That means you need to select the choice that is the bad answer, but many students rush through and select one of the good answers instead. So let's break down this question because it is important to understand the concept. So first of all, backing up is always dangerous because it is hard to see behind your vehicle. Before you back up, always check behind the car uh, before even getting into the car, especially for children. Can you believe that thousands, yes, thousands of kids are backed over every year, many literally dying in their own driveway? It's so sad, but it's entirely preventable if we just remember to check around our vehicles before getting into them. Also important while backing up, glancing in your mirrors and looking over both shoulders, keeping your head on a swivel. And you especially want to pay attention over your right shoulder, as it will generally give you the clearest view of the situation behind you. Now, as we mentioned in part one of this series, Backing or backup cameras, sorry, can also be very helpful, but never rely on them solely. They don't give you the full picture of traffic all around you. In fact, if you only use your camera when you back up on your DMV test, you will instantly fail. Not to mention, what will you do in the real world if your camera stops working? So make sure you select C because safely backing your vehicle does not usually include tapping your horn before you back up. The DMV only wants you to use your horn when you absolutely need it, like to help avoid an accident. And while you may technically use your horn when backing if needed to prevent a collision, it shouldn't be a part of your daily backing up routine. Uh, using your horn any old time that you want can confuse other drivers and pedestrians by startling them and creating dangerous situations unnecessarily. Question number eight, the question is, you are driving at night on a dimly lit street 
and using high beams. You should dim your lights when you are within 500 feet of A, an oncoming vehicle, B, a vehicle approaching you from behind, or C, a sharp curve or hill. Correct answer is A, an oncoming vehicle. If you are using your high beams or brights when driving on a poorly lit country road or in a dark residential neighborhood, then you must turn off your high beams when you encounter another oncoming vehicle within 500 feet. If you don't, you'll essentially be blinding the other driver with extreme bright lights. And why would you ever want to blind someone who is approaching you head on at a high rate of speed? So for this question, if you simply read the two wrong answers, you'll quickly see that they make no sense. About 5% of students incorrectly choose C, a sharp curve or hill. But if you think about that, why would you need to dim your bright lights in that situation? When you approach a sharp curve or hill, your bright lights sh uh, won't be shining directly into anyone's eyes at all. So that wrong answer is a no-brainer. Amazingly, many, many more people have been choosing the incorrect answer B, uh, a vehicle approaching you from behind. But when you think about that wrong answer, it's even more ridiculous. Why on earth would you turn off your high beams when someone is approaching you from behind? Um, as my grandmother used to say, that's just plain silly talk, Elizabeth. The confusion with this question probably comes from the fact that uh, there's a very similar DMV concept about dimming your high beams when you are approaching another vehicle from behind. And in that situation, when you're behind another car and not approaching them head on, then you have to dim your headlights at 300 feet, not 500 feet. Okay, I know all these seemingly arbitrary numbers are confusing at best. And when numbers start to scramble my brain, I turn to good old fashioned rhymes to help keep things straight. So red tail lights from behind are easy to see, dim those high beams at 100 times three. For oncoming cars don't shine in their eyes, dim those high beams at 100 times five. I know it's a little janky, but that's the best that I could do. So please let me know in the comments if you've got something better because I am all ears. Anyways, this question happens to be super easy to remember for those of you who are already familiar with the mythical five-headed, three-tailed dragon of bright lights, Hydra Beam. Yeah, you can just associate the dragon's five heads with 500 feet of oncoming or for oncoming headlights and its three tails with 300 feet when approaching taillights from behind. How simple is that? Trending harder question number seven. If a driver is going to pull out in front of you, the safest thing to do is A, honk your horn and maintain your speed, B, use your horn and swerve into the next lane, or C, slow or stop your car and use your horn. The correct answer is C, slow or stop your car and use your horn. All that is required to answer this question correctly is some very simple defensive driving decision making. If someone is about to pull out in front of you or cut you off, the safe and correct thing to do is to slow down or stop if needed and honk your horn to hopefully prevent a potential collision. Instead, more people than ever are answering the dangerous answer A, honk your horn and maintain your speed, which is unsafe and risky, even if you feel that you have the legal right of way. Whenever it helps to prevent an accident, yield to other vehicles at all costs. As our friends at TrafficSchool.com like to say, if you insist on your right of way, you may end up dead right. Question number six, you are driving on a city street and see an emergency vehicle with flashing lights behind you. What should you do? A, drive to the right edge of the road and stop. B, stay in your lane, slow down and let it pass. Or C, drive to the right edge of the road and slow down. The correct answer is A, drive to the right edge of the road and stop. This is a good one for all drivers, but especially for new drivers who often get flustered or nervous when they see emergency vehicles racing down the road with their sirens blaring and their lights flashing. If possible, you always want to drive to the right edge of the road and stop until the emergency vehicle has passed. However, if you are already in an intersection when you see an emergency vehicle, just continue through the intersection and then drive to the right as soon as you can and stop there. Now this past year, many more students are answering incorrectly with C, drive to the right edge of the road and slow down. Now while this answer sounds reasonably tempting, it is wrong. 
you must pull to the right and come to a complete stop, not just slow down. Got it? Good. All right, we're down to the top five questions that test takers are answering wrong like never before, but you won't become one of these statistics, right? Mm -mm. Nope, because you're taking the time and energy to prepare yourself so you can learn from the mistakes of others rather than making the same mistakes yourselves. And that, my friends, is why you are some of the smartest future drivers on all of YouTube. Moving forward with trending harder question number five. Generally speaking, you are in a large truck's blind spot if you A. Drive close to the large truck's left front wheel B. Cannot see the truck driver in the truck's side mirrors or C. Follow no closer than 10 feet behind the large truck The correct answer is B. Cannot see the truck driver in the truck's side mirrors When passing a large truck, you will be in the truck driver's uh, blind spot or no zone if you can't see the truck driver in the truck's side mirrors. So in other words, if you can't see them, they can't see you. And trust me, you don't wanna drive in his no zone any longer than you have to. If a large truck changes lanes into you, needless to say, you'll come out of the situation a loser every time. And this is a fairly tough question that has traditionally troubled test takers, but it's been getting even tougher as of late with more people answering wrong with A, drive close to the large truck's left front wheel, which is not true because if you are next to the driver's left front wheel, you should be clear of the no zone and they should be able to see you without too much effort. Question number four, when should you use your headlights? A, anytime you have trouble seeing others or being seen. B, one hour before sunset until one hour after sunrise. Or C, anytime you can't see at least two miles ahead. The correct answer for this one is A, anytime you have trouble seeing others or being seen. Per California Vehicle Code 24400, a motor vehicle must be operated with lighted headlamps during darkness or inclement weather. Well, thanks for that user-friendly description, California Vehicle Code. What the heck is inclement weather? Well, inclement weather technically occurs anytime you need to keep your windshield wipers on constantly or whenever road conditions prevent you from clearly seeing a person or another car from a distance of a thousand feet. For reference, a thousand feet is about two to three blocks depending on where you live. So in other words, you must turn on your, uh, your headlights whenever it's getting darker or you drive in rain, fog, snow, dust storm, smoke, falling ash, or any other adverse condition I can't think of at the moment. And as the correct answer implies, your headlights aren't just there to help you see, they also make it easier for other drivers to see you. Just like an airplane in the night sky, their lights aren't to help them see, the lights help others see them. So why are 20% of exam takers getting this one wrong? Well, because students are increasingly slipping up and answering B, one hour before sunset until one hour after sunrise. And truthfully, this answer sounds pretty good because it sounds similar to the language used in another section of the California Vehicle Code, where darkness is partially defined as any time from one half hour after sunset to one half hour before sunrise. But if you read answer B closely, you'll notice that there are two details that are slightly off. The first clue, it's not an hour before or after, it's half an hour after or before. So just avoiding the one hour answer should help. The second clue is not as obvious, but hang in there with me as I try to explain it. The wrong answer B says one hour before sunset until one hour after sunrise. However, as we just mentioned, the vehicle code considers darkness one half hour after sunset to one half hour before sunrise. Now, if you visualize it like you see on the screen right here, it makes sense. Incorrect answer B would mean using your headlights while the sun was still fully visible in the sky, so that's a little suspect. However, it makes much more sense uh, that you'd use your lights one half hour after sunset to one half hour before sunrise when the sun is not quite visible in the sky i mean sure it might be a little light out but it's also a little dark too and harder to see in other words and less technically speaking you normally use your lights from about dusk to dawn all right but let's get back to helping you pass the test 
Just remember this little rhyme. Forgetting to use your headlights is trouble. It is ever so mean. Anytime you have trouble seeing others or trouble being seen. Yeah. <laughs> Question number three. When you enter traffic from a stop, for example, pulling away from the curb, you A, should drive slower than other traffic for 200 feet, B, should wait for the first vehicle to pass, then pull into the lane, or C, need a large enough gap to get up to the speed of traffic. The correct answer is C, need a large enough gap to get up to the speed of traffic. Whenever you pull into traffic from a full stop, like when leaving the curb or turning out of a driveway, you will need a large enough gap or opening in traffic that allows you to enter the roadway without impeding or slowing down other traffic. While the gap size you need will differ depending on uh, the speed of traffic and road conditions, you generally need about half a block on city streets and at least a full block on higher speed highways. Also, don't forget to respect the road conditions when entering traffic. If it's wet or icy and the road is slippery, it may take you longer to accelerate to the speed of traffic. So you may need a bigger break in traffic before entering. Now, like I mentioned, this question has been stumping more students as of late with a 36% increase of students choosing wrong answer A, should drive slower than other traffic with uh, for 200 feet. Now again, an answer like this might sound good because it sounds official with 200 feet, but don't be fooled. And of course you won't be, because now you have the right answer. Wait for a large enough gap to get up to the speed of traffic. Question number two. If your driving record shows you failed to appear in court after receiving a traffic ticket, the DMV may A, suspend the registration of the vehicle, co of the vehicle you are driving, B, suspend your driving privilege until you appear in court, or C, restrict your driving privilege. The correct answer is B, suspend your driving privilege until you appear in court. If you get a traffic ticket and do not appear in court, the DMV will suspend your driving privilege until you appear in court. This one is particularly tough because both incorrect answers actually sound pretty plausible to anyone who has not memorized the California Vehicle Code. In fact, both wrong answers were chosen this past year more than ever before, with many people choosing uh, answer C, restrict your driving privilege. The key to getting this question right is to use the cheat code embedded in the question itself. Notice how the phrase appear in court is in the question. Well, fortunately for us, the correct answer also includes the phrase appear in court. So just use that oh so clever clue and you'll be one of the wise ones who gets this question right every time. Yay. Okay, time for a deep breath. We have finally arrived at the top most, mostest, most early, most mind-bending, gut-wrenching, boot-shaking, nerve-wracking, anxiety-inducing, pepto-bismal, demanding, progressively petrifying, increasingly incomprehensible, trending harder question in the galaxy, or at least at the DMV test. Are you scared yet? Okay, well, don't be, because this question is actually the easiest question in the history of driving school questions. Or should I say, it will be the easiest as soon as I tell you the answer. So. Question number one, when can you drive using only your parking lights? A, 30 minutes after sunset or 30 minutes before sunrise, B, under no circumstances, or C, on foggy days when visibility is low? The correct answer is B, under no circumstances. Never drive with just your parking or fog lights. If you need to use lights while you drive, Always use your headlights, either your low beam headlights or high beam headlights. Any other lights like your parking and fog lights can be used with your headlights to increase visibility or awareness, but never use only your parking lights or fog lights by themselves while you drive. Now, while both wrong answers um, get a lot of attention, far too many students have been choosing A, 30 minutes after sunset or 30 minutes before sunrise, I'm really surprised that people get this question wrong at all, but the truth is one out of four people miss it. To me, it's so easy to remember because it's so logical. When should you use uh, only your parking lights? When you are parked, <laughs> which means don't rely on them alone when you are driving under no circumstances. On a side note, many students have asked me how and when to turn on parking lights. So let's do a quick tutorial. 
First of all, your parking light switch is usually located where your headlight controls are, and the symbol for parking lights will either look like the letter P with three lines representing light beams, or like two small D-shaped light bulbs shining away from each other. That symbol makes sense because your parking lights are sometimes called side lights and shine to the side. In fact, many cars have three sets of parking lights, amber or orangish lights right next to your headlights, um, another separate set of orangish lights on the side of your front bumper, and the final set is located in the rear of your tail lights. And those rear ones are usually red in color, but they're not to be confused with your brake lights. So when should you use parking lights? Usually, you will simply use your parking lights along with your normal headlights while you drive uh, to make your car more, vis more visible from the sides. Many cars these days will automatically turn on your parking lights for you um, when you turn on your headlights. However, there are times when you will j just use your parking lights all by themselves. It's worth noting that parking lights can stay on for a longer period of time without draining your car battery, and you should not hesitate to use them when sitting uh, or hanging out in a parked car while it's dark out, thus giving you more visibility to others. People also use them in situations where they park their car along a narrow or poorly lit road so that other motorists can easily see them and not run into them. Anyhow, we kind of got off on a tangent there, but in addition to passing the test, I figure it's important for you to know how to use those dang parking lights too. So there you go. So there you have it. If you made it this far, I trust that your brain has officially grown like two to three sizes since we first started. Um, all dorky jokes aside though, I'd like to commend you on watching this video and our other test prep videos. Uh, knowing that you're serious about doing well on your DMV test, it just warms my little driving school heart and it gives me renewed hope that tomorrow's roads will be filled with educated drivers like yourself. If you haven't already, make sure to take the additional step of reading the DMV handbook. This literary masterpiece, it just contains a lot of important information and it covers every single topic that could possibly come up on your permit test. If you don't know where to find the handbook, no worries, just check the links down below. And before I go, one more humble request of you. If you found this video helpful and you have strength left in your clicking finger, <laughs> please like and subscribe. Um, if you're feeling really adventurous, please drop us a comment or ask us a question. We love reading what you have to say and learning about your own personal driving journey. So please don't be shy, share a little bit so that we may all continue to grow in driving knowledge together. Until next time, future driver's license holders from Permit Quiz Liz and Drivers at Direct, keep staying safe out there.